All right. Well, let's, um, before we get started, let's uh, have a word of prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your, your grace and mercy toward us. We thank you for sending your son Jesus to um, die for our sins and that he has uh, conquered death and hell, risen and ascended and sits at your right hand, ruling and reigning in glory. Uh, we look forward to the day where you make all things new and ask that you would help us to live uh, with that hope that is in us uh, being evident to those who do not know you uh, and help us to be good ambassadors for you. Uh, we pray that you give us uh, wisdom and um, that you would uh, have your Holy Spirit be upon us as we uh, study how to defend the hope that is within us. We pray that you would um, help us to remember what's profitable and forget what's not. Uh, we thank you for your grace and mercy toward us. In Jesus' name, the Holy Spirit, amen. 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 So uh, I'm going to today work through one of the questions, kind of piggybacking off of what John Hagen had uh, asked a few weeks ago, what do you do with kind of your normal, everyday person? And uh, this is going to reflect some of my experiences, kind of confessions of a young Calvinist, obnoxious apologist, uh, and, and to try to kind of talk through some of the things that we need to keep in mind as we, um, we're, we're giving yourselves a sharp tool and we want to... Uh, to know the appropriate time and manner in which to use it. So I'm going to start by reading in its entirety kind of the flagship Christ Christian verse about apologetics. This is 2 Peter, or for, sorry, 1 Peter, uh, chapter 3, verses 15. Actually, I'll continue on to 17. Or, uh, start at the end. I'll just read where it makes sense. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled, but in your hearts regard Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is, that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect, having a good conscience, so that when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will." than for doing evil. So uh, a lot of times the tendency, especially once you kind of cling on to the, the intellectual side of apologetics is to really emphasize the give a defense for the hope that is in you and to neglect the but do it with gentleness and respect side of things. So uh, today I'm going to kind of talk about um, how we do that and feel free to ask questions as we go along, but I'm gonna kind of uh, emphasize what do you do now that you've got this sharp tool? How do you use it responsibly? So uh, the, I think a good analogy for this is remember, give a defense for the hope that is within you. So you don't go around um, looking for uh, people to smack down, you, you, you um, that, 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 that's not going, like you have your reward if you go about uh, defending the gospel in that way. You don't treat your normal neighbor like a celebrity atheist in terms of how you interact. Um, I, I like the analogy of um, a handgun. So you can use a gun for uh, defense. You, you're not going to go around like Yosemite Sam shooting up the joint uh, being the rootinest, tootinest uh, person in how you do that. But it is valuable to train in how to use that tool as a defensive weapon, hoping that you'll never have to use it in real life. And I think apologetics is kind of uh, along the lines of that analogy. Um, any questions so far? So... Um, what we want to do then is when you're 
dealing with kind of your neighbor on the street sort of thing. You don't want to like go up the, 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 uh, the joke or meme where like you've got like the row of urinals and then the person like sidles up right next to the, uh, the, 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 the one person using the urinal and you, you don't want to be like, can your worldview account for the preconditions of philosophical intelligibility? Like th that's not what you lead with. Uh, but the, the purpose of apologetics is when you've got, say, a presumed intellectual objection to the hope that is within you or somebody is attacking the hope that is within you, that's when you can um, use the techniques um, and focus on um, kind of using that tool for defense uh, rather than, than offense. Uh, so the, does anybody have like a scenario they want to talk through where kind of a hypothetical conversation you may have had or a real conversation you may have had keeping the, uh, the people anonymous where like you weren't exactly how sure how to move forward? All right, so uh, without that, then the, the, the thing I would stress is your actions speak louder than words. So just in your, in your real life, when you're encountering people in the day-to-day, -day, how you act and as an ambassador for Jesus Christ is going to be the primary um, indicator of how successful from a sense that you can actually observe it. Um, we don't know the, the secrets of the things that haven't been revealed by God. But um, we, we do know that you've been told, we've been told, do not repay evil with evil, but overcome evil with good. Um, when your enemy is thirsty, give him something to drink. When he's hungry, give him something to eat. Uh, those things are always the priority in terms of how we interact with those who do not have hope. We need to have kind of some empathy and compassion for them, kind of following what Jesus did. So when Jesus, in his ministry, when he encountered the prostitutes and the tax collectors and the, the people who were kind of down and out in society, he didn't go and hit them with both barrels. I mean, he would kind of take them where they are and um, kind of call them out on their need to repent. But um, the contrast that with how Jesus interacted with the scribes and the Pharisees. So if somebody's really, really prideful and arrogant and blasphemous in terms of how they're interacting with the gospel and they're attacking you, attacking, um, attacking Jesus, that is where you would kind of use some of these techniques. If they're, they're trying to kind of be the great value Bertrand Russell, this is when you can use these, these techniques. We want to be sure that we've got this hope, uh, that, that we are confident in our ability to defend this hope within us. Uh, and this is a a valuable place to train, but it's not, it's kind of a last resort weapon rather than your first choice in terms of how you interact with people in your, your day to day life. Any questions or comments? Um, and I, I, it's not, obviously, none of scripture is a coincidence, but it's, it's not a coincidence that. Um, having a good conscience that when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better for suffer, to suffer for doing good than it should be, uh, if it should be God's will, than for doing evil. So the, in reality, you may wind up suffering and um, coming under attack for trying to be Jesus to somebody, to, to, to be an ambassador to that person. Uh, they're on, 
you come to their aid and uh, the, or maybe it's the third party that gets upset by it. The, the, there are kind of the prodigal son's older brother uh, characters in this world who you see um, somebody having compassion on somebody that they don't like and that's when the, uh, the knives come out, so to speak. Uh, and it's, it's those, those situations where you're encountering a presumed intellectual objection to the gospel where you can go and um, kind of counterattack to um, let the, the kind of defend the gospel and the integrity of, um, of the Christian worldview. Um, and it's often that, and I don't know to what extent Brian, when he comes back to Bertrand Russell and his Why I'm Not a Christian um, essay, the, the problem with Bertrand Russell is that he's not doing a good enough job. He's a lazy atheist. If you take his ideas and uh, kind of advance them to their logical conclusion, then like you can't even account for identity over time. You can't talk because that requires presuppositions about the words that you're saying and all of that. So we can be confident that the that we have a reason for the hope that is within us. We have um, the revealed world of God. We have a great cloud of witnesses throughout the history of the church who have preserved the word of God. Uh, And we can answer those objections, but we always want to, um, to, to dial things back and make sure that we're doing it with gentleness and respect. Am I doing on time? 10.50. So I think, and I guess I'll just open it up to general questions um, to to the substitute teacher. And uh, if we don't have any, we can close in prayer and um, prepare for normal Sunday worship. All right, well, let's pray and we can uh, close things out a bit early today. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, sending Jesus uh, to us. We thank you for the, the body of Christ that we have, to, um, that we are one in Christ, and yet um, each have our own uh, gifts and, um, and ability to bless one another. Uh, we ask that you would give us uh, wisdom and um, compassion toward those that do not know you. Help us to be faithful ambassadors um, out in the world as after the benediction uh, this week and every week that we would um, bring your love and your grace out to the world in a way that um, draws people to us, to, draws people to you and causes um, them to um, ask questions, uh, genuine questions about the hope that is within us. We pray that you would give us gentleness and respect in how we uh, interact with those who don't know you and uh, also with those who do know you and may uh, disagree in terms of methods or techniques. Um, We pray that you would uh, work your redemption in this world in a way that the gates of hell will not withstand it. We ask this in faith, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit, one God, rub without end. Amen.